Hi guys, welcome back. So today I have another book haul for you because, you know, it just keeps going. I got a lot of books this month that I'm really excited about. I have some that I actually received from publishers and then some that I purchased and I am very excited about them so I am going to share. First up I have some ARCs that I received from Doubleday Books so thank you to them for sending these to me because they all look really cool. The first one is called The Victorian and the Romantic, A Memoir, A Love Story, and a Friendship Across Time by Nell Stevens. And this book, okay first of all I the cover is really pretty, which is part of why I wanted it in the first place, but this book is super interesting. It's nonfiction, but it's like part memoir, part history. It's about this girl who is a grad student doing her thesis on Elizabeth Gaskell, who is a Victorian era author, and I actually really love her. She wrote Wives and Daughters and some other things. I really like her writing a lot, so I just was really fascinated to know more about her, and so I'm looking forward to this. And this comes out on August 7th, so I will be reading this during the summer, which I'm looking forward to. Then the next one is one that I've been seeing around. This cover is gorgeous and it just sounds really cool. So I got Fruit of the Drunken Tree by Ingrid Rojas Contreras. I think this might be her debut novel actually and it sounds really interesting. This one comes out July 31st. It's set in Bogota, Colombia and it's about a seven-year-old girl and the teenage maid that sort of befriends her and I don't know much else about it but the cover is beautiful. I've heard good things and I'm looking forward to getting to this too. So I do plan on reading this in the next couple of months. And then the last book that I have from Doubleday comes out on June 5th. It's a thriller called Social Creatures by Tara Isabella Burton. Uh, this one is also a debut. This is a debut thriller. It's set in New York City and they say it's for fans of Gillian Flynn. So this one should be interesting. So I'm going to check that one out too. Thank you so much to Doubleday Books for sending those to me. Then, um, this one I actually know the author and he had some arcs and gave me one and I'm really excited about it. This is Anger is a Gift by Marco Shiro and this one comes out May 22nd if I'm not mistaken. I've heard such good things about it. I'm really excited to get to this fairly soon. This is about a queer teen boy dealing with institutionalized racism and joining part of the modern civil rights movement. So I'm really excited to check this one out. Okay, and then the last physical arc I have to show you, I actually found at a bookstore and got for like a dollar, but I'm really excited about this, you guys, because it's set in the same world as a book that I really liked. If you've read Uprooted by Naomi Novik, this comes out in July, but it's called Spinning Silver. And this, I don't know much about it. It's set in the same world. And look at the cover, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. So I will also be reading this sometime in the next couple of months. It goes on sale July 10th. Then I have three books from a publishing event that I went to. These are already published, but they had like grab bags with free books, which was really exciting, and I will always take free books. So I have three books from Simon & Schuster. The first one is called Bachelor Girl by Kim Van Alkmaid, and this one looks interesting. Um, this is probably the newest release. I think this actually came out this year, but it's about a woman working in New York during the Jazz Age. Don't know much else about it, but that sounds cool. I also have a copy of The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon, and this I guess was best selling a few years back. I think it's like kind of a thriller, but not really, but about children and motherhood baby. I'm not quite sure, but again, supposedly pretty good. And then the last one was This Burns My Heart by Samuel Park. This is beautiful. This is set in 1960s South Korea and is about a woman who feels trapped in her marriage. Then I won an Instagram giveaway. I can't remember what the name of the people is. If I remember, I'll try to put it on the screen here, but I think that it was being run by the literary agency that works with this author. But I won a copy of Four Nights with the Duke by Eloisa James. This is a adult romance novel, historical romance, which is sometimes fun to pick up. So thanks for that. And then I found a book that I'd been interested in that, I, that my library was giving away a copy of. So I got a used copy of Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple. I've been like kind of interested in this, but not enough that I was gonna go buy it necessarily, so they had it for free, so I thought I would pick this one up. I know it was going around booktube a while back, and it sounded like it might be an interesting contemporary novel. Then the lovely Liana from Liana's Library, my booktube buddy, sent me a copy of To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo, and I think 
think this is like a Little Mermaid retelling. I've just barely started it. She was just so excited about it. She was like, okay, I'm gonna send you a copy because you need to read this. So thank you so much to her. That was really sweet of her. So, and this is really pretty, you guys, by the way. Like, look at these end papers. It's got like an imprint of a dagger on the cover, which is kind of cool. So have that. Okay, what should we do next? I have been watching videos from Courtney over at The Cortagonist, and she's super into cozy mysteries. And I haven't actually read any, but they just look so adorable. And so I kept seeing them for like 50 cents and kept buying them. So <laughs> I'm thinking one of these months I'm gonna have to do a theme where I just do like a bunch of mysteries and thrillers to get through some of the ones that I keep picking up. But I blame this pile of books on Courtney. Uh, but at least the paperbacks were only 50 cents, so I don't feel too bad about it. So I have Book, Line, and Sinker, A Library Lover's Mystery by Jen McKinley. Which, these titles, you guys, they're so funny. Like, the puns. Oh my goodness, I can't even. Then I have Read It and Weep. Oh, these are in the same series. Hey, check that out. I didn't even realize it. That's exciting. By Jen McKinley. That's sweet. Good. I have something in the same series. Where do they actually fall? I don't even know. Okay, so these are books three and four in the uh, Library Lover's Mystery series. Well, look at that. I didn't even realize. <laughs> it's like really sad, right? Then I have Evening Bags and Executions by Dorothy Howell. I have Murder Undercover by Kate Carlisle. And then uh, moving away from the cozy mysteries, I found And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. So those were all 50 cents each at the Strand, so I picked them up. <laughs> Even though it's not something I normally read a lot of, they were just so cute and they've been calling to me. But ever since I bought these, I was like, okay, you can't buy any more just because they're cute. You have to actually read some of the ones you got and see if you like them first. So we're going to do that. Then this is one that I've heard uh, some good things about and I found a copy for two dollars. It's in like perfect condition. So Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz and this is like a murder mystery within a murder mystery sort of thing which sounds really intriguing to me. It's like a murder mystery with a author who's writing a murder mystery. So that just sounds really cool and it's beautiful. It's got like deckled edges. Ooh, fun. It's like, anyway, this just looks really neat and I mean for two bucks it's beautiful. Oh cool, look at that. It's got like a red magpie on the front. That is so cool. That is a beautiful book. Okay, so yeah, so I picked that up. And then this is more of a thriller, but it was also two dollars and something that I've heard a couple people, I can't remember who, but a couple people talked about this and said they really liked it, who I think had advanced copies of it. It's called Blood Sisters by Jane Corey. Um, and she wrote My Husband's Wife, which I haven't read that, but this is like a psychological thriller about three little girls who something happens and then they grow up and I don't know, but I just thought the cover was stunning and I heard somebody say they liked it. So for $2, I got that. All right, then what should we do next? I've got some YA, I've got some fantasy sci-fi, I've got some middle grade, um, oh, Okay, no, first I'm going to share this because you guys, this was like such a find, I could not believe it. And I just have to say, I think somebody may have screwed up because I doubt this was supposed to be on the $2 racks at the Strand, but it was and I found it. I got a copy of What Happened by Hillary Rodham Clinton for $2, but wait, not only that, it's signed. It's a signed copy for $2. You've got to be kidding me. So um, this is now like in plastic and that's exciting. Number one, I've been wanting to read it, but also this is like a collector's item. I could just like, you've got to be kidding me. I couldn't believe I found that. So that was really exciting. Okay, then what else? Oh my gosh, I have so many things, you guys. I had one pre-order that came in this month and that is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. I'm hoping to get to this this month. I'm really excited about it. It's beautiful and it sounds really cool. It's set during the Civil War era, but it's about zombies and uh, deals with race relations. I'm really looking forward to it. So I have that. That was a pre-order. I don't pre-order a lot of books, but occasionally. Then I went to an event, the New York City Teen Author Festival, and they had this big signing and I went only planning on buying one book. Of course, I bought three, which could have been worse. There, there were like 
30 authors signing, I think, and I feel pretty good about the fact that I only bought three books for that. The first one was the one that I actually went there planning to buy, and this is actually by an author tuber you may know. It's Keeper by Kim Chance. I like her channel. She's super sweet, and I got to meet her. She did sign it for me, which was very nice. Magic always leaves a mark. So that was really sweet. I think the cover is beautiful and I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. It's about a 16 year old girl who gets attacked by a 200 year old witch and then discovers that she has magical powers. So that sounds awesome. And then I got a couple that I've just been eyeing on and off and so when I saw they had paperback copies and the authors were there I thought I would go ahead and go for it. The first one is Spindlefire by Alexa Hillier. This looks so pretty. I think it's a Sleeping Beauty retelling. I love the cover and I know that book two in the series just came out. Actually, I think she gave me, oh yeah, Winter Glass. So this is for book two. And she signed it for me, which was really sweet. I really enjoyed meeting her. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. I do like fairy tale retellings. I think they're fun. And then the last one I picked up at that event was The Forgetting by Sharon Cameron. This cover, you guys, is so pretty. It's so, so pretty. And this one just sounded really interesting to me too. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I know it has something to do with a community that makes you forget your memories and like as a way of controlling people, something like that. I always like that sort of like quasi dystopian sort of thing. I don't know, I'm into that. This one was also signed, Don't Forget. <laughs> Then I'll show you the rest of the YA books that I picked up. The first one is one that, again, it was one that I found for $2. It was in great condition. I am planning on reading book one in this series this month, and this is book two. It's Rebel Spring by Morgan Rhodes. But you guys, it's so pretty, and it was only $2, and it's like a hardcover. So now I have book one in paperback and book two in hardcover. So that's a thing. Um, and then this, you guys, I was so excited because I found an early half price copy for $9, but I have The Fates Divide by Veronica Roth, which I am really excited about. Uh, it's got these beautiful teal end pages, and I don't know if this shows up on camera at all, but this cover is stunning. It's got like a map, sort of like compass map thing on it. I know this is a controversial series, but I really loved book one a lot. I'm still a little salty that they changed the font for book two, but I guess it could be worse. So yeah, so now I have this whole series and I'm looking forward to getting to this soon. I did really like book one and it's just a duology, so I'm looking forward to finishing that. Then you guys, I saw this at Barnes & Noble the other day and I just couldn't resist. I had a 20% off coupon, plus I'm a member, so it wasn't that expensive, but I found the short story collection, Queens of Fenburn by Kendar Blake. This is part of like the Three Dark Crowns series. It's two novellas. The first one is The Young Queens, which is about the three sisters when they're kind of growing up together. And then the other one is The Oracle Queen, which is about one of the queens in their history. So I'm really excited about this. I was like, oh, it's so pretty. I can't resist. And it's this really pretty like soft touch paper. I do kind of wish they'd done it in hardcover because I have the other two books in hardcover, but you know, it's cool. I'm happy enough with it. And then because I was on a Kendar Blake kick because I really, like her and this is not something you can find. I've never seen this in hardcover because it got published a while ago but I've heard good things. I found Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendar Blake. This is one of her backlist titles and it's kind of like a horror ghost story but also a romance and I've heard people say they really liked it. I found it for nine dollars so I was like let me just get that too. Then I have a book that I'm very excited about. I am going to be doing a review video of this. Actually, maybe I'll film that today after my book haul. I might film this today. But um, I just finished reading it and I did really like it. It is a fantasy debut novel called Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. I am going to be going to the launch party for this in like a week and a half also and I will bring you guys along with me and film it. So I don't know when this video is going to go up. I may have already been there and whatever but um but yeah, this is fun. So if it's up already, I will link my review up above, but if not, keep an eye out for that soon. Um, yeah, it's the beginning of a new fantasy series, and I did like it. It's not perfect, but I liked it. Next, I found a lower cost copy of a book that I've just been <sighs> drooling over these covers for a really long time, and so I finally gave in. Literally, you guys, this copy of the book was at my local bookstore for like a month, and every time I went in, it was still there, and I was like looking at it thinking like, okay, if April comes and this book is still there, that must mean it was meant for me. 
and April came and it was still there so I got The Alchemist of Loom by Elise Kova. Oh, you guys this book is so so pretty and the cover is beautiful but let me just show you this. I It's stunning. Look at that. Look at that. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh. I can't even get over it. It's so beautiful. I kind of like don't even care if the book's good or not because it's so beautiful and it was only $12 so yeah it was sitting there I was eyeing it for like a month and finally was like I'm so getting this it's some kind of like a fantasy steampunk -y book I think I don't know much about it I just know that it's beautiful and I needed it in my life so then if you saw my haul from last month you might have seen that I found used copies of these books that I really loved when I was a teenager and was hoping to find the rest of the series and I did find the rest of the series for a dollar each I found Wolf Queen and Wolf Wing by Tanith Lee. These are books three and four in the series. And you know what's funny? I actually don't think I ever read book four. I think this came out later on. These are the Clady journals. The covers are really weird. I know it's like very 90s, but um, I these books are beautiful. They're really good fantasy. I kind of want to do a reread of them. And when I mentioned it, one of my other friends, Lauren from the novel Lush, was saying that she really likes them too. So she's buying them. And I think we're going to do like a buddy reread of them because we both liked them as teenagers. And we're about the same age. So anyway, so I was like really excited I found those. And then I also found, again for a dollar each, copies of the first three books in a series that I always wanted to read when I was a kid and for some reason was able, never able to find and I know a lot of people love these so I also got these because I think for my kids when they get a little older they may enjoy them but um, they're by Lloyd Alexander, part of the Chronicles of Prydain, so Book of Three, The Black Cauldron, and The Castle of Lear. So I have the first three books in that series, which I'm excited about. Then this was kind of a random thing, but it was 50 cents and the cover was kind of cool. I found The Never Ending Story by Michael End. I did not even know this was a book, so I thought that was kind of cool. I thought the cover was really interesting and like for 50 cents, you know, why not? And then for a dollar, I found a used copy of book three in the Amulet series, The Cloud Searchers. I'm gonna have to get the other ones. I've heard really good things about this graphic novel series. It's like a middle gray graphic novel series. Um, I haven't read them, but they just look really cool. And for a dollar, I was like, oh, well, let me pick this up. Because this is also the kind of thing that like, my four year old in like a year or two would probably read this. Even if now, maybe, I don't know, I'll have to look through it and see. But um, yeah, so I just thought that was a great deal. Okay, I have a few more things. One was, again, I found this at a bookstore for a dollar. It's an advanced copy of a book that came out in February, but it's called Dreadful Young Ladies and Other Stories. This is a adult short story collection by Kelly Barnhill, who was the author of The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which was like a huge award-winning middle grade book that I've been hearing people talk about lately. Anyway, so this is like a set of creepy sort of short stories written for adults that just sounded really interesting to me. So I was like, let me get that. Plus the cover's kind of cool. So yeah. The rest are like all used paperbacks. Then I found a used copy for a dollar of a science fiction book that a friend of mine from several years ago had recommended to me and my library didn't have it at the time and but when I saw it, I thought I would go ahead and give it a try. It's called Wool by Hugh Howie. And I think this is kind of like a post-apocalyptic sort of science fiction book where um, there's been a nuclear holocaust and people are living underground. I don't really know much other than that, but I know she raved about this series. So when I saw book one for a dollar, I thought I might as well pick it up and give it a try. Then I think I mentioned in one of my videos previously that I decided to start collecting this series again and I found book one for 48 cents. It's The Memory of Earth by Orson Scott Card, and this is part of the Homecoming series. This is probably my favorite series by him. It's more obscure, not that many people know about it, but it's this really good epic sci-fi series um, that was written a while ago. When was this published? I should see. He's like... Okay, so book one came out in 1992. So this is from the 90s, but um, I really love them, so I'm going to keep my eye out for the other copies, but I was really happy to find book one. Then I found, again, for like 50 cents, a copy of On Writing by Stephen King. And I've heard a lot of people say good things about this. And I am trying to get more into my writing. So I thought that might be a good thing to have. And it was very cheap. 
as were all the rest of these books. The rest of them were also like 50 cent mass market paperbacks that I found. Um, I found a copy of Stormborn by Rochelle Mead. She's the author of the Vampire Academy series. I didn't read that, but I read her follow-up series. I always forget the name of it, but I really liked it, and I like her writing. I just think it's very bingeable and kind of fun. This is an adult romance novel written by her, so I was like, ah! 50 cents what the heck let me give this a try then I also found a paranormal romance burn for me by Alona Andrews you guys this cover is so bad but um I do have friends that really love her and so I figure if I see any books by her I'll go ahead and pick them up because I do plan on reading her stuff sometime this year so <laughs> we'll see these covers are so terrible though but I've heard she's really good so we'll give that a try and then last but not least, I was super excited to find this for 50 cents, you guys, because I've been eyeing it and thinking about buying like a full on $8 copy. So I can't tell you how excited I am. This I am actually going to be buddy reading with my friend Leanna from Leanna's library soon. When are we reading this? I can't even remember. June, maybe? I think June. Uh, it's Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. She loves this series and she's going to be doing a reread of it and it'll be first time for me. So I'm looking forward to it. It's it like starts out as a heist novel, which is part of why I wasn't originally super interested in picking it up, but apparently it turns much more into political intrigue, which I am very into. So yeah, I will be reading that sometime pretty soon. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I bought in the last month or so. As usual, there were a lot of them, um, but a lot that I'm really excited to read. So. And I bought a lot of like mass market paperbacks. Oh my gosh. All those mysteries. Courtney, what are you doing? Ugh. Okay, so definitely what's going to have to happen is sometime soon we're going to have to do like a mystery thriller readathon or something. So let me know who would be interested in doing that with me in the comments down below. And maybe I can pick like a couple weeks or something to focus on that and try to get through some of my like mystery novels and thrillers that I've been some of my like mystery novels that I've been accumulating over the last couple months because I'm like but they look so cute and she loves them so much so I'm gonna try them so I'm looking forward to trying that out let me know in the comments down below if you guys have read any of these what you guys think I should read first there's a lot of good stuff in here there are things that I'm planning on finishing this month and a couple things that I've already read but yeah I'm really excited about these books. Books are always good. It's always a problem. And huh, I did also recently place a book outlet order, so you will probably be getting an unboxing of that when that comes in. So yes, most of them were for my children, but I definitely picked up a few things for myself. They're just such good deals. I'm such a sucker for deals. Yeah, so there you go. Talk to me in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.